Hi everybody, so we are continuing on with our Romeo and Juliet commentary series. This is the beginning of Act 2. This video is going to be slightly different because it's not as much of me, <laughs> because I want to show you uh, the marriage scene between Rome Romeo and Juliet, which I am in, obviously. That opens Act 2, but I also want to show you the big fight scene between Mercutio, Tybalt, and Romeo, because it's absolutely amazing. This particular cast did it so well, I just I have to show it to you and take you through it. So, here we go, beginning of Act 2. The end of Act 1 was uh, the Balcony Pas de Deux, which I've already done a commentary video on. I will link that in a card for you. And the very, very ending scene of Act 1 was the nurse giving Romeo a letter from Juliet, which is what he currently has in his hand, um, saying, I will meet you at the church at such and such a time. Let's get married. Let's do this. So that's the end of Act 1, and now we open with Act 2, a Romeo arriving at the church. And this is Friar Lawrence, played by Jonathan Stafford, who was a principal at the time. Now he is a ballet master. And, of course, the whole point of this is that we know that this marriage is probably not going to work. <laughs> and I think everybody in the town knows the Montague and the Capulet issue. And as you're going to see in a minute, Friar Lawrence is a bit reluctant to make this happen. So Romeo says, I can't wait anymore. Uh, Your eminence, please help me. And he says, of course, my child, come here. And so Romeo says, look, here's the letter. It will explain everything. Um, I want to marry Juliet. And Friar Lawrence is like, I don't know about this. This might not go well. <laughs> um, okay, here I come with the nurse, back in the purple dress that opened the ballet. Um, and this act for me was... Uh, the, the acting act. I did all my hard dancing in Act 1, and for me, Act 2, with the exception of the bedroom pot de was all acting, so I loved Act 2. So basically here we're begging him and saying, please, please marry us, and Friar Lawrence is like, nope, I really don't want to have anything to do with this. A lot of begging. I hated this part, because you're on the stair, you have no room, and you have to make it big just so the audience can see it, but when you make it big, you feel kind of ridiculous. So I was never a fan of this this part, just because I didn't know how to how to make begging look big and frantic and yet not completely ridiculous. Um, this is supposed to be us being so eager we don't know which side to stand on to get married. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that either. Um, but here we go. Here comes John and he says, your hand and your hand, and this is how you get married on stage in ballets. Guys, you don't have a lot of time. There are no rings involved. So we just put the hands together and call it a day and you're married. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and the nurse, of course, and remember the nurse is Juliet's confidant. Um, she is the one that knows every, the whole situation, all the particulars. A uh, couple little promenades here, I liked this. Back to the cape, Sean's still wearing the cape, which made things interesting. Um, I like that little promenade. So then we go back to the friars and say, thank you so much, thank you so much, oh, happy, happy, and the nurse is like, all right, that's it, that's your wedding. No flowers involved, low budget, bye. <laughs> so um, that is that is it for me in this video, actually. Um, but I again, I want to take you through this fight scene because it's unbelievable. So here you start to see the doom and gloom happening. Friar Lawrence is like, I really hope I didn't just make a big mistake because I cannot see this going well <laughs> at all. So now we're going to jump to the big fight scene. So a reminder of the cast, Amar Remisar is Tybalt, Andrew Vayette is Mercutio, and Austin Laurent is Benvolio. So the Capulets and the Red have been dancing a bit, and now the Montagues kind of come in and steal their thunder. And Tybalt's had it. Tybalt is officially, like, over it. <laughs> He's so over it. He says, you, I'm so annoyed with you. And Mercutio being the ham that he is, Andy in the purple, kind of takes a whole jokey approach to the whole thing. See, he's kind of like, huh. you know, he's that, that sort of tease and bully and doesn't really take it seriously. And Tybalt takes it so seriously. So he's like, all right, you know what? Let's settle this once and for all. I've, I've had it with you. Um, and Mercutio's like, yeah, really? Okay. Uh-huh. And now coming in, in the back, you see Sean as Romeo. Romeo is now in a bit of a pickle because he, unbeknownst to everyone else, has now married into the Capulet family. And he is now, you know, Tybalt's family and, and has married his cousin. And so he is bound and determined to make the peace and says, look, Tybalt, why, why can't we just 
all get along and all be happy and friends and rainbows and butterflies. And Tybalt's like, nope, nope, I'm determined to win this. And even Mercutio's like, come on now, let's fight them. Let, let's, let's settle this. And, you know, Romeo's just not going to do it because he knows that it would be a big, big problem. So Tybalt says, yeah, I challenge you. And Mercutio's like, all right, great. And, and Romeo's just determined to not, to not have that happen. These are real swords. Guys, they are absolutely real swords, as you're going to see in a minute. And um, the guys went through months and months of sword training for this. So Tibble's had it, challenges uh, Mercutio, and Mercutio's like, all right, here we go. Big tour jeté, give me a sword. <laughs> so they trained for probably 10 months before Peter even started choreographing this. These are real swords. They're going to do real sword fighting. It's not just tap, 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 sutanu, tap, 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 sauté. I mean, it is legitimate. And every show before hand, I think it's 30 minutes, they have a fight call, meaning they will run all of the, the fighting in Act 1, and then five minutes before Curtain of Act 2, they will go through all the sword fighting for that act. So they always go through every single fight beforehand. So everybody's on the same page, everybody knows what they're doing. See, now Andy's got two swords, and Amar's going to get a second sword in a minute here, and so it's going to become a four-sword fight, which is just ridiculous. And then you've got Sean in there with capes. I mean, it's just, we'd all stand there like with our eyes popping out of our heads um, watching these guys do this. Because they're not trained sword fighter, fighters, they're ballet dancers, you know what I mean? And they learned all of this just for this ballet. They were like little kids at a candy shop though, you know, boys and toys. So, um, but it is very intense. You could get hurt and uh, it's, it's crazy. So right here, you're gonna see uh, Andrew, as Mercutio, gets stabbed. This is where Mercutio finally loses and Tybalt succeeds. And so Mercutio, trying again, being the ham that he is, tries to play it off. You know, big tough guy, I'm fine, I'm fine. And clearly everybody is aware that he is not, not fine. Tybalt included. And uh, Andy did a great, great job with this. Just the personality of trying to stay light about it and oh, it's all fine, and then he ends up, he uh, ends up not being okay. Um, and Romeo, of course, sees the gravity of the situation and is not happy. Romeo being very impulsive, remember, as you're gonna see in a minute, Romeo's very impulsive and says, come on, come on, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be fine. And, um, you know, all, everybody knows that up until this point, the Capulets and Montagues have fought, but nobody's actually died, I think. This is where it gets deathly serious. So Mercutio obviously knows he is, he's not going to make it and uh, is going to get up in a minute. Yeah, here he says, you, Tybalt, and Romeo, finish it for me. I, I'm dead. Finish it. Avenge me. And so that's the end of Mercutio. One down, a million more people to go. So um, now you see the the now this has turned from a little feud in the streets to deathly deathly serious. Romeo being impulsive is now okay. My best friend has just been killed by a member of my family because now he's again in that in that uh, family. This is where it gets a little bit dead here on the stage. Not a lot happening, but Tybalt now realizes what he's done and Romeo is determined. Here's where his head takes over his heart and uh, says, all right, now I'm, I don't care whether I'm married to your cousin or not, I am going to avenge my, my friend's death. So he picks up the sword that is very strategically placed. All of the sword fights were so choreographed down to the last letter. I mean, it was, every sword was in the right place, every arm, every head. I mean, it was meticulously, meticulously rehearsed. Because um, every guy had to do it. If you were a guy in the company at New York City Ballet, you were in sword training. Every single person did it. And it is legitimate. See, even there, he, he rolls and stabs. If, he, if Ramar didn't roll in time, he could have literally been stabbed. So it's, it's so crazy. And then you take into consideration, when you and you guys know this, when you're in a performance, you give so much more than when you're in rehearsal. So it's like you have to make, remember that, okay, I can't totally overdo this. And, and do it differently than the way I rehearsed it. And that was the biggest fear, is that they'd be so into the character, so into the story, that they would go too far. 
So it was like you had to restrain yourself. Um, and see, now Benvolio is like, come on, Romeo, this is not good. And see, even if you see Austin in the dark blue, he threw off a sword. I mean, even every little thing was choreographed, every placement of, of swords. Um, and this is where, you're going to see in a minute, Tybalt loses. And he stabs him in the back. This is kind of brutal. It's obviously not gory because you can't be gory on stage. But we did not take Tybalt's death very lightly here. Romeo stabs and stabs and stabs, again, because he's very impulsive, so he is determined to avenge Mercutio, and kind of acts before he thinks, because now he's killed Juliet's cousin, so now there's even a bigger, bigger problem, and there goes Tybalt, two down, <laughs> more to go, so that is the fight scene. But I'm going to take you back now, uh, just real quick, to show you something absolutely hilarious. While all of this is going on, I want you to direct your attention to the back corner on the left there, which is actually stage, upstage right. Um, see how the set starts in the middle of the stage? Keep your attention back there. The Montagues and the Green are strategically hiding that point. Because in a minute, you're going to see two, there's one right there, two black cloaked figures go across the stage. <laughs> That's me and John Stafford in black cloaks, changing places. Hold on, we're going to watch it again. We're going to watch it again. Okay, so right there, you see two little figures crossing the back. That's me getting behind the set and John Stafford coming off the stage from um, the wedding scene. Anyway, I just found that hysterical. We had to do that every single show. It's like so low tech. Anyway, I just thought you guys enjoy that. But the distraction of the sword scene, of course, hides that from the audience. So if you missed the commentary on the second half of the ballroom scene, and uh, which is the variation and the pot -da, it's right there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much. Hope you're doing well, and I will see you next time.